The restoration and preservation of health forms an integral part of any society. Drastic advancements in medicine have caused us to forget some of the people that made all this happen. Join us in this Liberty episode as we take a moment to honor the people who, across the ages, have endeavored to enhance the human experience through the study and practice of medicine. Hippocrates is the most famous doctor in the world and is considered the father of Western medicine. Unfortunately, details about Hippocrates are scarce since he lived thousands of years ago. However, there are over 70 treaties that are attributed to Hippocrates, including the celebrated Hippocratic Oath. Over the years, the treaties were combined to form a collection known as the Hippocratic Corpus. While he may not have written all, they reflect his philosophy. For instance, Hippocrates is credited for developing the theory of fluids or the four humors. According to Hippocrates, the humors determined an individual's mental and physical health, as well as their disposition. As such, to maintain good health, a person was required to maintain a good balance of the humors. Hippocrates believed that eating good food was one of the ways that a person could maintain a healthy balance of the humors. Doctors use the Hippocratic Oath as a guide for medical principles and ethics, although some medical practitioners feel that it does not address modern challenges sufficiently. Dr. Elizabeth Blackwell, who is the first female doctor in the U.S., endured many challenges in her quest to become a doctor. During her medical school tenure, Blackwell was often excluded from laboratories and was forced to attend classes sitting outside. Additionally, people shunned her for daring to challenge traditional norms that demanded women stay at home. After completing school, she opened a clinic in New York where she treated indigent children and women. Dr. Blackwell is credited for opening the Women's Medical College of the New York Infirmary and founding the National Health Society in England. Apart from providing health care services to society, Dr. Blackwell deducted her professional life towards advocating for women's equality in the field of medicine. Born in 1856, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams lived at a time when it was unimaginable for a colored person to pursue an education, let alone become a doctor. Throughout his life, Dr. Williams battled racism, poverty, and other biases of the era. However, this did not stop him from being the first surgeon to conduct a successful pericardium surgery in the U.S. Additionally, he founded the Provident Hospital and Training School in Chicago, which was the first non-segregated healthcare facility in the country. He also founded a nursing school for African American, the Provident Hospital of Cook County, which is also the first Black-owned and managed hospital in the U.S. Born in 1881 in Scotland, Sir Alexander Fleming served during the Great War as a medical corps captain before entering research. Fleming was particularly interested in the natural bactericidal characteristics of blood and antiseptics. In the course of his studies in 1921, he discovered lysozyme, a bacteriolytic substance in secretions and tissues. Dr. Fleming accidentally discovered penicillin in 1928 while studying the influenza virus. According to Dr. Fleming, after leaving a staphylococcus culture unattended on a plate, he later returned to find that mold had grown on it. Upon reserving the reaction, he realized a bacteria-free circle had been formed by the mold. Further studies revealed that the new culture prevented the development of staphylococci and that it was a member of the penicillium family. Dr. Helen Brooke Tausig, born in 1898 in Massachusetts, is considered by many to be the pioneer of pediatric cardiology. Her magnum opus, Congenital Malformations of the Heart, which was published in 1947, earned her worldwide celebrity. Additionally, the Blacklock Thomas Tausig procedure is credited to her. This procedure has helped to prolong the lifespans of children 
with tetralogy of phthalate, a major cause for the blue baby syndrome. In the course of her career, Dr. Tausig caused the banning of taliodomide, which resulted in deformations among children whose mothers used it while pregnant. Her testimony before Congress caused the drug to be banned in Europe and in the U.S., the American College of Cardiology appointed her as its first female president in 1960. Dr. Charles Richard Drew was born in 1904 in Washington, D.C. He was an African-American researcher with an interest in blood transfusion. In the course of his career, he developed enhanced blood storage facilities, which were later used to create large-scale blood banks. His improvements in blood collecting technology ensured that donors had a central location where they could donate blood. These facilities also conducted tests on blood plasma before shipment, which ensured that the blood was not contaminated. His efforts are the foundations upon which the American Red Cross Blood Bank is established. Dr. Michael Ellis DeBakey was born in 1908 in Los Angeles. He had an illustrious medical career that lasted 75 years and is one of the first cardiovascular surgeons in the world. In the course of his long career, he performed more than 60,000 surgeries. As an innovator, he created some of the components that were used for the first heart-lung machine. In 1950, he created plastic tubing used for vascular repair, which doctors used to prevent kidney failure and stroke recurrence. Through his innovations, Dr. DeBakey revolutionized the field of cardiovascular procedures tremendously. His famous innovation is Dacron grafts, which are used for vascular repairs. The Dacron graft is used across the world to save lives and is also used in the repair of aortic aneurysms. Due to his contribution in the field of medicine, Dr. DeBakey is a recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor, the National Medal of Science, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Thank you for listening to this episode. We hope you have enjoyed and learned something new. Like, share, and subscribe to Liberty for more.